So let's talk a little bit about radiators, your coolant, uh, your antifreeze, okay? All we're gonna discuss today is, is a few things. Uh, tips on your actual coolant, uh, what the importance is of your coolant, uh, maintenance of your coolant, your radiator cap, and just how things work inside your, your actual radiators. So what actually makes for a good uh, radiator coolant or an antifreeze? So there are tons and tons of different types of antifreeze out there. Um, some of them require you to uh, to dilute with water. I prefer, and we prefer to use uh, your straight coolants that you can put straight into radiators without diluting. I just feel it's more effective. Um, so what makes for a good coolant? Okay, let's talk about heat disbursement or displacement. That's what your coolant is doing. It's, it's going through your bike and it's drawing heat from the actual bike, from the engine, heating up the liquid itself, bringing that back through your radiators and that airflow is cooling down the coolant. That then obviously is now cooler and it runs back through your motor. That is how it cools down your bike by the liquid itself actually removing heat from the engine or displacing heat, okay? Now, a coolant that doesn't displace as much heat isn't gonna be as effective. Um, there, there's some people that will tell you, put just water because it's gonna displace the heat better. But then again, the water's gonna have a higher uh, boiling temperature. So what are the benefits of antifreeze? Okay, so first off, antifreeze, exactly like the name suggests, doesn't freeze. Well, actually it does freeze, but it freezes at a much lower uh, freezing point to water. Okay, so places that are very cold, places that are often covered in snow, you're going to run an antifreeze so that the liquid in your radiators doesn't actually freeze. Um, uh, on the other scale, antifreeze has a much higher boiling point than water. So you're going to put just water in your radiator, your bike's going to boil over quicker, you're going to lose your coolant. Okay, so antifreeze has a much higher boil uh, boiling point. The next thing about antifreeze you may not know is um, antifreeze is also an anti-rusting agent. So everything inside um, your, your bike where your antifreeze moves around, uh, your water pump, all of that, obviously inside your radiators, antifreeze helps it not to rust. And that is obviously quite a big thing. If you're gonna run just water, you're gonna develop rust from the heat and whatnot. Yes, there's a lot of aluminum in there, but you must remember there's also mild steel parts. And this is what your anti-rusting agent is gonna help, okay? So once again, a lower, lower freezing point, higher boiling point, anti-rusting agent. Um, and as we talk about, it's a heat disbursement. These are why we use uh, antifreeze. Let's get back to what makes a good coolant. Let's remember that uh, the coolant is, is there to disperse the heat. So a good coolant and an effective coolant is going to draw heat. Okay, This is a very simple uh, method that I use to test how efficient a coolant is. Um, I call it the finger dip method. Sounds a bit funny, but you're gonna see now. Okay, so we're gonna do the finger dip method um, to test the actual efficiency of the coolant that we have inside our bike. So very easy, the finger dip method. You're gonna take your pinky, because it's the smallest one. You're gonna get it in the hole, shake the bike around a bit, get some coolant there. Coolant on your finger, and you're gonna blow lightly on your finger and feel, if it's a good coolant, you're gonna feel your fingertip actually uh, starting to heat up. So as easy as this. And straight away, I can feel my fingertip actually start to heat up. And that is the disbursement of heat just from my breath onto my finger. And that is an effective coolant. If you don't feel any heating up once your finger is wet with coolant, if it doesn't heat up, um, that means that your, your coolant isn't really that effective. And you have a, quite a low level um, of glycol inside your coolant. Now that's not going to be as effective as something that heats up your finger quicker. Um, again, it's heat displacement, how quickly that coolant is drawing heat. So let's talk a little bit about your radiator cap itself. Um, first off, you will see a pressure 1.8 there on the right. This is a very common pressure that you're going to find in most enduro bikes, uh, just about all of them. Okay, This 1.8 is the pressure that this cap uh, will release at. Now that's a higher temperature on the enduro bikes than your motocross. Your motocross you'll generally find 1.1. Okay, Let's talk about what actually holds that pressure back and what the point is of that pressure. Turn your cap around, okay, you're going to see seal 1, seal 2, and you're going to see a nice thick spring, okay. That 1.8 pressure is actually the pressure at which this spring will compress completely and allow coolant to bypass out of your radiator. Okay, the pressure is built because your coolant is overheating, boiling, and obviously it's going to compress, it's going to create pressure. So that 1.8 bar is how much pressure it's going to take to completely compress your spring, okay. 
Let's talk about the maintenance of these items. So because that spring is constantly moving up and down, as you can see, I mean, it's constantly gonna be moving up and down inside your bike as your pressure fluctuates. This is actually a serviceable item. You should be replacing that out of, out of caution every year, maybe replace this, this uh, cap. You'll find much older bikes, they, they tend to overheat and boil out their radiators very quickly. That's because this spring has become uh, a bit loose and, and doesn't hold this tension anymore. Obviously you also want to make sure that these two seals over there are still in good condition because they're going to actually seal off your coolant and your radiator completely. So when we're talking about your radiators overheating and boiling over, um, when we're talking about your spring compressing up with the bar uh, with too much pressure, there is a basically an overflow pipe. Okay, If you look at the top of your radiator on the Sherco, ours come out, they go down under the tank and they actually root themselves all the way back into a boil bottle. On most other bikes um, that don't come stock with a boil bottle, you're still gonna have this bleed hole there. And what that does obviously is when your radiator cap compresses too much from pressure, it allows the cap, there's your cap, so it would compress and it would allow fluid to flow out of the radiator because of the amount of pressure, but it's gonna then obviously direct it straight down the bypass, that little hole over there. Okay, now if you don't have a boil bottle, what's going to happen is it's going to bypass out of that hole and it's actually going to feed itself through onto the top of your exhaust you're going to get a massive um, white sort of puff of smoke and that's going to tell you that your bike is overheating with these bikes with something like a boil bottle you can actually hear it sometimes boiling it's going to come out of that um, through the pipe and root itself to the back of the bike where it will fill up a boil bottle uh, once the bike cools down it actually allows that to seep back in it sucks it back in and it fills the radiator back up. So that would be the benefit of the oil bottle. And that right there, as we say, that is your, um, your bike. So let's talk a little bit about the level of coolant that you should have in your bike, okay? When you look at your radiator, there's your full radiator. Um, this bit at the top is, is obviously space for coolant, okay? When you go and look into your, into your radiator, where you actually want your coolant in a radiator is just on top of the fins. If you can even just see the top of the fin, that is not a problem at all. Have a look there. You can actually see that little light flickering. Okay, all you need is your coolant to be just on top of the fins. You don't want to fill this up completely. The more you fill this up, the more pressure is going to build quickly. And anything you overfill anyway is just going to go straight out of that, that overflow hole. So in terms of the level of your coolant, all you want to do is be just above those radiator fins. When you're topping up your coolant or you're putting your coolant in, I always like to fill it up, lean it over. You can hear those bubbles. It's actually going in between. As you can see there, you've got a you've got a radiator hose that goes between the two radiators. So when you're filling up, I like to fill the, the coolant up on the bike that's level, put it over. You can actually hear it going into the other other side bring it back level and check a few times you want it again you want your coolant just above the radiator in terms of the maintenance of your antifreeze this is something that you should do or look at I would say minimum once a year um, if you if not even sooner okay so if you've gone a year without changing the coolant a year without having to it is a good thing and a good practice to actually flush your radiator okay now there's a process to flushing your radiator and there's also products to flushing your radiator in our shop, we tend to use the Liqui Moly Radiator Flush, a little metal can, it would say on it, Radiator Flush. And all you're basically doing with that is you're adding an additive to your coolant, you're running the bike hot, and then you're dropping your coolant. And that additive is gonna help clean out what's in there. This is something you wanna do, as I say, at least once a year. Um, or if you've gone on a ride, you've blown your coolant and you've had to use river water or, or something like that, some other uh, antifreeze that isn't in your bike already, and you've mixed the two. Um, get a good flush going, clean out your radiator and put the product back in. In my opinion, you don't want to mix two different types of radiator coolant. Um, you're going to mix colors, you're going to get all, all different things in there, you're going to mix something that could um, want to be diluted versus something that doesn't want to be diluted. Just keep it simple. Uh, it's like your engine oil. You don't want to mix your engine oils, you don't want to mix your two-stroke oils. Let's not mix our coolants. Have one type of coolant in there at a time. Switch between them, that's fine, but don't mix the two, okay? If you have to mix for any reason, get a good flush going. Get a good, good to do to keep your whole cooling system nice and clean. Um, after a long time, radiator coolant actually becomes a bit like jelly if you leave it. So, for example, if your bike has been sitting for a couple years non-started, often we'll pull the whole, the whole uh, water pump and it's like jelly in there. So the coolant actually goes off after some time. If you're constantly riding, that's not going to happen. But let's just say a radiator flush 
is like flushing your oil in your engine. It's really going to keep everything nice and tidy inside and keep that whole process flowing nicely as it should and as efficient as it should.